Okay, in this lecture series on digital logic, we're going to learn how to create finite state machines. We're actually going to make a sequence detector. We'll create a more machine and a melee machine. All right, let's start with our example problem. We're going to start by learning how to make a state diagram for a more state machine, and then we'll actually learn how to make the state tables and the state transitions tables. Here's our problem statement now to, for our sequence detection. We want to create a more finite state machine that detects the input sequence 110. Overlapping sequences are allowed. So we'll define these terms throughout the lecture. What a more machine is versus a melee, what an overlapping sequence is. What we want to do is work, our machine needs to detect when the number one comes in, then the next number one, and then the number zero. So the numbers will come in this order from left to right for our machine to recognize the sequence. Right. There, when you use three bits, we realize there can be eight unique sequences, right? We could have 000, 001, 010, and others, but we're only interested in 110. So for our hardware we're making, whenever we detect a, one, a sequence of 110, our hardware, our finite state machine, will output a value of one, only when this input sequence has been detected, right? Otherwise, we'll always have an output of zero for any other sequence of numbers. Right. So we'll see that as we develop this. When we have read this full sequence, recognize this 110, our output will be a one. Otherwise, our output will always be a zero. What we're going to do now is to define some different states. We'll have a finite number of states. We always start from some known initial state, right, which we'll call the reset state. Right, if we hit a reset button, we would go back to this known initial state, and we'll name the initial state S0. Right? So we have our first state name. Right? Some people name them A, B, C. I like to name them with S and then followed by numbers. So state S0. Right? Now what we need to do is start determining the total number of states we need to recognize the sequence 110. Our state machine input will always be a single bit for each clock cycle. So finite state machines are sequential circuits that are driven by a clock. We'll use flip-flops to impl implement them, and we'll need the clock uh, to clock through from the present state to the next state. Right. So the first bit we want to detect is a one, meaning we're going to be sitting there in state S0 until we get an input of one, because that's the first number in our sequence, one, one, zero. We'll then want to transition from state S0 to S1 whenever we receive this first one. So we've now defined basically two states. Right? We started with state S0, that's our initial state, and we said we're going to stay in state S0 until we receive this first input of one. We'll name that next state that we transition to as S1. We often show our finite state machines using a state diagram. When we draw state diagrams, this graphical representation, all of our, we'll draw a circle, we'll put our state name inside the circle. All right, so there'll be one circle for each state. So state S0, here's its name. And we always show for a more machine, so for a more state machine, the outputs are shown inside the state circle. So I've just gone ahead and decided to name Z as the output. Right, Z is the variable name for our output. When we're in state S0, we have not recognized the sequence 110, so our output Z will be a zero in this state. Since we have another state, S1, that we've now named, right, we'll draw this second circle here for S1. And we transition from S0 to S1 whenever we have an input of one. So I've named the input variable x, and we show then the state transition, we show our inputs on these directional arrows. Meaning, see the directional arrow goes from S0 to S1 in the way that the arrow points, and that only happens when our input value is a one. So here's what our state machine looks like so far. And so when we're in state S1, we get there when we've had our first input of one in the sequence, We've not yet recognized the full sequence 110, so our output Z is also a zero in this state. Now we need to determine what we want to happen when we're in state S1. Right. 
So when we're in state S1, we'll transition to another state S2 when we have another one input. All right, remember we're going for the sequence 110. When we get our first one, we transition from state S0 to S1. So this state means we've read in and recognized our first one. S2 means we've read in and recognized our second one, or we've seen the sequence in this state of 1-1. One, one. Right, so if I want to give state S2 a description, that means we've had the input of 1-1. One, one, right? So we've drawn this third circle. Notice because we've only recognized the sequence 1-1 one, one and not 1-1-0, one, one, our output Z is still a 0. We show that our input value X was a 1 on this state transition. Right. The, if we want to complete our sequence then, right, after we receive the 110 or after that's input, we, sorry, after 11 is input, our next number that we're looking for to complete the sequence is a zero. And we'll create a third state, or sorry, a fourth state named S3. We'll draw a bubble for it. We give it the name S3. Our output Z in that state is a 1 because now state S3's meaning is that we have received, so a state S3's description is that we've received an input of 110. Right? Because the path to this state from S0 is here's an input of 1 which transi transitions us to S1. The next input of 1 transitions us to S2. The next input of 0 transitions us to S3. So we have now recognized the sequence of 110. Our output Z is a 1. Okay. When we complete the path, the full path that we need to recognize our input sequence, we now know the total number of states. And here's our description so far. We have these four states that we've named S0, S1, and S2. Here's the description that I just gave them in terms of English words. S0 means it's our initial or reset state. S1 means we've recognized an input of 1. S2, we've recognized an input of 1, 1. And in S3, we've recognized an input of 1, 1, 0. Now that we know we need a total of four states for this state machine, we also need to determine the state transitions for other input values. Remember, if we go back here, we've only recognized when we're in this state that X what happens when x is equal to 1. We need to determine when we're in this state what happens when we get an input of x equals 0. We need to do that for each of the states. Remember with one input x, it can have two possible values, a 0 or 1. So we're going to have to fill in the rest of those transitions then in order to complete our state diagram. So here was our state diagram with our successful path of 1, 1, 0. Right. Let's look at state S0. We've accounted for the input of x equals 1, but what happens when we get an input of x equals 0? Well, we're not looking for any sequence that starts with the number 0. So when we're in state S0 and we get an input of 0, does the that means we've recognized the sequence of 0. Does that match any of our states? But let's go back to our states. Do we have any state that says, oh, we've recognized just an input of 0? No, we do not. So what we do is we're going to stay in this initial state, S0. Right? So here's our summary. Right? In S0, then when we get into 0, we don't have any state that says we've recognized the sequence of 0. So we add this arrow here for our input. When x equals 0, this arrow says just stay in the same state. We don't leave this state. Now what we want to do is we want to move over to S1 because we've completed S0. We've recognized what happens when our input of x can be a 1 and what happens when our input of x can be a 0. Right, now we'll move to state S1. We've recognized here what happens when x is equal to 1. We want to recognize what happens when x is equal to 0. So in state S1, right, if we're here and we receive a zero, so we're in state S1, we receive a zero, meaning we get to state S1 only after we received a one. When we receive a zero, that means our input sequence so far has been one zero. And do, are we looking for a one zero? No, we don't have any state that recognizes a one zero. So what we want to do is we want to transition back to the initial state S0. So we draw the arrow from S1 to S0, we show our input x 
value of zero on this arrow to know when we transition back. All right, now we'll do the same thing for S2. All right, so in S2, remember we've recognized the input sequence 1, 1. So what happens when we're in S2 and we receive a 1 input? That means our sequence then is 1, 1, 1. We ask ourselves, do we have a state that represents input 1, 1, 1? No, we do not, right? But because we're allowed to have what we call overlapping sequences, meaning we don't have a 1, 1, 1, but we can look at it and say, do we have a state 1, 1? So what we do is we're going to remove the leftmost input bit from the sequence 1, 1, 1, meaning we're going to remove this bit. We're going to look at the two rightmost bits, so the two rightmost bits are 1, 1. And we say, do we have a state that represents the sequence 1, 1? We do. That state is S2. All right, so we say in state S2, when the next input is a 1, we stay in state S2, recognizing the overlapping sequence 1, 1 of the input 1, 1, 1. So if we were not allowed to overlap sequences, we just return back to the initial state if we didn't have a state that recognized that. We're mainly going to work with overlapping sequences because we'll uh, actually have less states in our state machine normally if we do that. All right. So well, here's then our state diagram, right? We said when we're in state S2 and we get this input of x equals 1, we didn't have any state that recognized the sequence 1, 1, 1, but because we allowed the overlapping, we knew we got rid of this leftmost one and we looked at these two remaining ones. And we said, do we have a state that recognizes 1, 1? Yes, that is the state we're currently in, S2. So whenever our input, whenever we're in state S2 and our input X is a 1, we're going to stay in state S2, right? We're almost done. We now need to determine what happens when we're in S3, right? And we receive inputs there. Right, so let's go back then and look at S3. So here in S3, we haven't accounted for any inputs. We're going to look at first at what happens when we're in S3, and we have a zero, right? So when the state transition on the input is x equals zero, well, when we're in S3, we have a one, one, zero, meaning when we get another zero in, we now have the sequence one, one, zero, zero, which doesn't match any of our states. Because we allow overlapping, we're going to remove this leftmost one, so we'll remove the one bit, and we're going to consider the sequence one, zero, zero. Does that match any of our states? No, it does not. So we're going to remove this other leftmost bit and look at the sequence 0, 0. Does this match any of our states? No. So finally, remove another leftmost bit, look at 0. Does that match any of our states? No, aside from the initial state, right, the reset state. So we're going to say for x equals 0, the transition from state S3 is to S0. And then we also want to look at what happens then when we're in state S3. All right, this transition should be what happens when it... Oh, sorry. Misread my own slide. Thought I had a typo. Let me bring that back up. Okay, so we just said... Our transition from S3 was to S0 and X was a 0. We want to know what happens when X is a 1. All right, so when we're in state S3 and we get an input of 1, remember state S3 was the 1, 1, 0. Now when we have an input of 1, our sequence is 1, 1, 0, 1. That doesn't match any of our states because we allow overlapping. We're going to remove this leftmost 1. So we remove the leftmost 1 and consider the sequence 1, 0, 1. Does that match any of our states? No, it does not. So we remove this leftmost one and consider the sequence zero one. Does this match any of our states? No, it does not. So finally we remove the leftmost zero and consider the sequence one. Does this match any of our states? Yes, S1 recognizes that we've received a one. So we're going to transition then from S3 to S1 when we have an input of one. And this is what our state diagram looks like at this point. We said when we're in S3 and X is a zero, we don't have any state that recognizes the sequence 1, 1, 0, 0. We broke it down. We didn't have anything that fit that pattern, so we transitioned back to S0. But we're in state S3, and we get an input of 1. 
right? That was our 1101. Well, we didn't have a 1101. We kept breaking everything down until we just got to that rightmost one. And we said state S1 then recognizes the sequence of got one. So now this is our completed state diagram for our sequence detector 110. And we've accounted for every single input value, every single transition from one state to another. The next step is building a state transition table. The state transition table is going to list the present state inputs, the present state, the inputs, the next state, and the outputs. So that will be the subject of the next lecture video when we create this state table.